Good morning, friend. Thanks for joining me. This is Pastor Pete in Lakewood, Washington at Abundant Life Church. Today's Thursday, the 4th of March, 2021, and uh, and like usual on Thursdays, it's time for Coffee with Pete. So grab your mustache mug. See my beautiful mustache mug? Grab your mustache mug. Grab your Bible and get it open today to Psalm 34. We're going to take a look at the first 10 verses or so of Psalm 34 and uh, and just see if we can learn a little bit more about God, God's love for us, His provision, a little bit more about ourselves, our need for provision, <laughs> I guess, and uh, how we interact with Him and with each other. So here's to you. Grab your coffee. Thanks for coming by for some conversation. Let's get to it. So Psalm 34, I'm going to read you the first 10 verses, then I'm going to backtrack. I'm going to go back after I've read through the first 10 so you can hear them. Uh, maybe you're following along. Maybe you're going to read read along with them. And I want to just break down some of the words that are here. And, and so we can, again, as I like to do sometimes, see, really see the power and the meaning behind what's being expressed to us and what the real truth of what's happening here um, in some of these words are. So Psalm 34, uh, starting in verse 1, again, we'll read about the first 10 verses. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul make it, makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Now, this is the introduction to the whole thing, and then he's going to go into and what I'm really interested in today is these next, from starting with verse 4 on. Uh, but that those first three verses, like we're going we're gonna to appreciate God. We're going to praise him. We're going to always be thankful to him for the things that he's done. But listen to what he's done. This is the psalmist speaking, starting in verse 4. He says, I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, though for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Some pretty great words, some good encouragement. And again, the, the psalm is talking about what he did and how God responded. So I'm just going to take it down through three of the verses, verse 4, verse 6, and verse 8. We're going to take a look at what they say and then break down some of the key words that are there. So verse 4, I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. I sought the Lord. What does it mean to seek? What does it mean that the, that the psalmist sought the Lord, that I sought the Lord, or you sought the Lord? It's it's. It's more than just a cursory look around and see what you can see. There's a following. There's a sense of knowing where the Lord has gone and following that. And then there's a sense also of pursuing. The depth of this word is one of pursuing and searching, looking for the clues. I sought the Lord. There's a very strong intentionality to this. I, I intend to find the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I sought him. I, I meant to find him. It wasn't just, I wonder what's out there. I have hope. I'm hope, filled with hope that I'm going to find my Lord. And when I did, what does it say? And he answered me. Once I sought him, he answered me. He couldn't have answered me unless he, I had found him. He answered me, meaning that underneath this concept of answering is, first of all, is listening. That the Lord is listening for us. The Lord is is welcoming our search. The Lord is is aware that we have a need of him and he's listening for us to seek him. And then he heard me. This answered means he heard me because he responded to me. He was listening. He's actively listening, knowing that I have need. And he heard and responded. And then it says, it goes on, it says, he delivered me from all my fears. So to be delivered... Boy, we live in a delivery society here in America right now, right? I, I have two packages coming today from Amazon, two different things, you know, some vitamins and a, and a humidifier for my guitar, right? Two different countries, both coming from Amazon because it's the biggest store in the world. But uh, yeah, there it is. So I'm waiting for a delivery. 
But in this case, a delivery is not something that's brought to a person because they sought it. It's being snatched away. The concept of delivery here is that you're in some kind of danger or potential danger, and there's a need to escape. And so God delivered me means God took me up out of what was going to be a difficult, dangerous, maybe life-threatening thing, and took care of my fears. He took care of the fears, right? He delivered me from all my fears, the word says. Well, fears is pretty simple. What are you afraid of? It, it's, it's what's frightening. He delivered me from those things that are frightening to me. Okay, verse 6. Um, uh, it says, This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. It has some similar things, right? I sought the Lord, this poor man cried. He answered me, the Lord heard him. He delivered me from my fears. He saved him from his troubles. But they're slightly different. So to be a poor man, to be described as poor, means to be humble, to be needy, to be even despondent or depressed. Could be depressed financially, emotionally, opportunity-wise. And then that person cried out, the poor man, the humbled man, because of his situation, because of his choices, the needy man cried out. Now, crying is more than seeking. Crying out, you might imagine crying out would be, I, I've done everything I could to look. I couldn't find him. And so I just called his name. I proclaimed it. I just cried out, God, I need you. There's more than to it than just the seeking. I cried out. I, I, I didn't know what else to do. I cried out. God heard him, it says in verse 6. The Lord heard him. The Lord was diligent in his attention. More than just listening and responding, the Lord was diligent. And he saved me, the verse says. He saved me from my troubles. He rescued me. He defended me. That saving and that delivering, they're a lot the same. The trouble being some kind of anguish, some the troubles that he was in were distressing. There was an affliction that came upon him, maybe of his own doing, maybe of the doing of others. But here he was in need of help. He cried out. That's the significant part there. Verse 8. Let's go back and keep going on to verse 8. It says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Taste and see. Taste and see. Like, like this is tangible. God is good and you can you can taste it. You can see it. There's tangible evidence that our senses can perceive. And so open yourself up to that. Open yourself up to knowing God's presence and God's goodness because you can both perceive and understand him. Our human flesh, it's not just a spiritual experience. It's not just a mental engagement. We can literally taste and see God's goodness. And, and what does it say? Taste and see that God is good, that the Lord is good. And this word good, you know, we, we take it, it well, over the years, it's just been used for everything, right? Everything that's good. But but really at the heart of it, the nuance of it, of it in, in terms of the Hebrew language is, is something that's really beautiful. That there's a bountifulness. If, if the harvest is good, it's not just okay. The harvest being good would be full. It would be bountiful. There's a there's a sense of kindness and loving, you know, you know, loving kindness, if you will. Right? There's a sense of of real expression of the benefit of another person, and just the very nature of the thing, the nature of God, by by its very existence. There's all these beautiful, bountiful kindness things that happen. He goes on to say, blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. So what about what does it mean to be blessed? To be blessed is more than just getting my wishes or getting out of my difficulties. To be really blessed means there's a there's a, a depth of true happiness. The blessed person, like when you say you say shalom to a person greeting them or or, or wishing them well, you're you're blessing them. That's giving them a blessing. You're, you're saying, you know, if you say have a great trip or I, I, if you literally say I bless you with good health, you're saying you're going to be truly happy because you're, you're going to be able to overcome the issues of your health. Either they're going to go away or they're going to 
pale in comparison to the happiness that you have. There's a sense of peace that comes in that kind of happiness, that when you're really truly happy, it's not because you're striving to achieve it or hoping for it. It has arrived and you can rest in it. And that goes right into this concept of refuge, that in, in refuge, in a place of refuge, is like you've come into this comfortable over place that's that you can trust that you're going to be protected and that you can relax. And the peace comes up, the blessing that comes up. Well, that's because the nature of God is good and you can find refuge in him. And his nature, just by not only are his actions good, which we saw in the first two verses, but his very nature is you can take refuge there. So so what do we do with this? Here, here's, here's the thing. If these things are true, if you could, if these words are true for you, if you were to read Psalm 34 and say, that's true for me, God, I sought you and I found you. I found refuge. You delivered me. You answered me when, my, when I cried out. Then thank him. Give thanks to God. Thank him for being that for you and for doing that for you. If that's not so much true for you, if, if you're struggling today and you're where, where is God? I would encourage you with another verse. It just says, be still and know I am God. God says that to us. Be still and know. Slow down your life. Find a quiet spot. Take a break. Don't let the cares of the world overwhelm you. Take a few breaths. Cleanse your breath. Let this tension go out and, and experience God's presence so that he can begin to show you the way. And he can begin to show you he's listening to you. He's listening to you if you will just respond to him, back to him. And then I guess the last thing might be, what about other people? Do you know other people who maybe need to know this kind of truth because you've found it? Tell, don't be afraid to tell your story. Just like the psalmist, he's telling his story. I sought God. I didn't know what to do. I was in a lot of trouble. And so I sought him and I found him and he heard my cry. And he gave me a place of refuge where I regained my strength, where happiness really flowed forth. And pray for those people. And that's what I want to do maybe in conclusion today. Let me, let me just say a brief prayer for us all. Heavenly Father, you're so merciful. You're good to us. We thank you for your grace. And we can see and know and taste that you're good. We're humbled, Lord, when we look upon all that you are and, and who you are and how much, how awesome you are. We also know that you bless us even though we don't deserve it. So I thank you for those blessings that you pour out. Lord, we sometimes feel that we're far from you, but we pray that your presence will be made known and that you will bring us close and remind us what it's like to be close to you. We want to be in close relationship with you. And we pray, Lord, that you would be with all those that we know who are lonely right now. Surround them with a loving community and fulfill their needs and let them know that you are the source of all that's good. We thank you that we don't need anything when we're with you. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. God bless you, friend. I pray that today you will know God's presence in a very tangible and real way and that you will be giving thanks because he heard your cry and gave you rest and peace in his refuge. In Jesus' name, amen.